It is Friday, February 11th in the NBA, and I'm back with my two best picks of the day, including two other leans for you guys. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. Do a quick recap from yesterday, a 3-2 and two profitable day. Our best bet of the day, Pascal Siakam, over 31.5 points plus rebounds. Cash was just barely. I know a lot of people got on the hook once Fred Van Vliet was announced out. That was just an annoying one. But Chris Paul has a killer game as the Suns beat the beat up on the Bucks. The Suns minus three and a half was my spread pick lean of the day. Won't count it as an official play. Kyrie Irving hits his over in points plus assists as well. Our losses, Isaiah Stewart, we added after the video. Yeah, he dealt with foul trouble all game long. Felt like a little bit of an inside job by the refs who were calling ticky-tack fouls. And then Luka Doncic had no no reason to get assists. He had 50-plus points. I mean, the man, the man was a walk-in mismatch for the Clippers, and they didn't feel like letting him pass the ball. He just went and scored a ton of points. So, shout-out to him. An added bonus, though, there was a stat correction to Yusuf Nurkic, which we lost a couple days ago, over 11 and a half rebounds. We lost in the hook. There was a stat correction, so he did end up with 12 rebounds. Hopefully, your book paid out. I've corrected my update or updated my record because DraftKings did pay out to the viewers, the people that had him and that's the book that we had it on now either way we push on if you are new to the channel consider hitting that subscribe button we're cruising along to 24,000 subscribers we can't do without you guys support we really appreciate it our parlay giveaway from yesterday was close we had some lights we had steven adams hit we had dorian finney smith he missed by one three-pointer and then jay crowder missed by two rebounds now obviously the knicks beat the warriors outright so we didn't have a chance there if only had a kuzma and lowry triple double lottery ticket then we would have hit but either way let's get into it we appreciate all the new people joining the channel we also appreciate the cos all-stars all you guys keep showing all that support. All you guys and gals continue to be the real MVPs, the reason that we continue to do these videos every single day for everyone. Shout out to our newest All-Stars. If you want to become one, you can click that join button on the channel. The people have a bunch of added perks, but they also get all the plays early, like that Pascal Siakam one, although we didn't have a line early in the morning. Shout out to our newest All-Stars, Levito, Singletary, Allen. We have Jaime, Gabe, and David. You guys are the real MVPs. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys again for becoming All-Stars. If you want to become one, click the join button on the channel, and I'll shout you out in tomorrow's video. Now, last three added notes. Our podcast, one, is live. We talk about the Super Bowl. We'll give our heads or tails, our Gatorade color, a bunch of other things, our Super Bowl MVPs. Go check it out. Link down below. Speaking of Super Bowl, my best bets, my normal video that I always have for the primetime games will be live on Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, a full 24 hours ahead of kickoff. Definitely don't want to miss out. We're going to have a lot of fun stuff in that video. And last but not least, if you want to go check out our dimers, link down below for the Caesar Sportsbook bonus, plus a bunch of other bonus offers. Definitely go do that. Check that out. Because part of being good at gambling is being able, being able to line shop having a bunch of different sports books. Because as you guys know, the lines are different on a bunch of different sports books. I don't need to tell you guys that. That's half the comments I get. But either way, let's push past enough dilly dallying. Let's get into my best bet of the day. Drum roll, please. DeJounte Murray, over 40 and a half PRAs, minus 110 on DraftKings. Now, the trade deadline came and went yesterday, and while we saw some interesting trades with James Harden to Philadelphia and Ben Simmons to Brooklyn, curious what James Harden's lines are today. I believe he is active today against the Thunder. Either way, a trade that didn't make a whole lot of sense, Derek White to Boston. And so the Spurs shipped him out, and that just opened up the door to a huge workload for DeJounte Murray, and I think that's what we're going to see today. And we saw, you know, the Spurs lean on Mr. Derek White to kind of run some of the offense when Murray was out of the game. Well, now White's no longer there. And sure, they replaced him with like Josh Richardson and Romeo Langford. Those guys can't run an offense. Over the last 10 games, we've seen Murray average 10 point or 18.5 assist chances per game. Derek White was second on the team with 10 assist chances. But now they don't have that playmaking. So Murray's going to have to do a lot more for this team. Now, Murray played the Hawks, who they played today. Once this season, he had 22 points, 8 rebounds, and 11 assists for 41 PRAs. Cash and just barely on the hook. And granted, that was a game that won. The Spurs lost by 18. He only played 34 minutes, which granted, he's normally playing closer to like 36 to 40 minutes. Number two, Derek White logged 30 minutes and had 12 shots. And Bryn Forbes, also off the team, also played 30 more minutes, no longer here. Now, the Hawks defense, as we've talked about, they gave up a ton of points to opposing shooting guards. And while that's not Murray's position, maybe we see Lonnie Walker step in and have a great game. Still think Murray's going to have to carry this offense in five games this season without, without Derek White. Here are his numbers. 41, 38, 33, 53, and 52 PRAs. 53 and 52 being his last two games. The 33 against the Knicks, which is a very tough team to get rebounds and assists against. Now, you look at it, that he's going to have to control the offense and control the ball. You look at Atlanta, they boast the fourth worst defensive rating in the NBA. The Hawks also run a super big lineup with John Collins and Clint Capella. They're going to need some guys to help out rebound, and Poto can't do it all. Keldon Johnson doesn't seem to want to get rebounds, although I think Keldon Johnson has a pretty decent game today. I'm going to run with DeJounte Murray, over 40 and a half PRAs. That's my best bet of the day. I think he's got a good chance to have a pretty good one, maybe even sprinkle the triple-double, and we'll see. I think his regular assist line is like 10 and a half. Probably want to take that, but PRA seems like a good bet. He's going to have to play a lot of minutes to keep him in this game. Now, moving on to my next one. It's going to be an interesting one. Jared Allen, double-double, and a win. Now, this might be an only FanDuel-specific bet. You might be able to build it on different other sports books. So, 
you do what you want with it. I do like Jared Allen's points plus rebounds line. It's like 27 and a half. Don't mind it there. But I like this line and this double-double and a win. Now, we talked about Jared Allen. Been pretty motivated since the All-Star team kind of got released and he didn't make it. He's been angry and he's had a double-double in all three games. Cash and his points plus rebounds line in all three games. And the Cavaliers, wouldn't you know, they won all three games as well. Now, shouldn't be much of a surprise, but when Jared Allen plays well, the Cavaliers usually win. That's just normally the recipe for success. When Allen's disengaged, the team doesn't play as well as they normally should. And today, great matchup versus the Indiana Pacers. The Cavaliers are six-point favorites. Maybe that increases as the day goes on. Now, the Pacers are a little bit different here. They don't have Sabonis. They shipped him off to Sacramento. And while that trade, you know, honestly, I think is a W for the, the Pacers in terms of getting Tyrese Halliburton back. And I'm sure Tyrese Halliburton plays today. Jalen Smith will may, maybe gets the start. He was traded from Phoenix to Indiana. Um, but Jared Allen should continue to feast. This is the team in Indiana that's given up points and rebounds to centers. Like, it's, it's going out of style. They've been just absolutely been terrible. Jared Allen has 29 double-doubles this season, the sixth most in the NBA. And while the double-double alone is a completely juiced prop at like minus 230 on FanDuel and probably like minus 200 on DraftKings, just DraftKings doesn't have a line this morning. They, they look, Jared Allen, when the Cavs have a great record. Now the Cavaliers have won 34 games this season. Jared Allen's only played in 32 of them. So in the 32 wins with Jared Allen, I want you guys to guess, how many of them do you think Jared Allen had a double-double in? Drum roll, please. 24 of them to be exact. In the 29 games he has a double-double, they are 24 and five. So they have a very good recipe for success when Jared Allen gets a double-double. When they don't, they're likely not gonna win the game. It's just how the numbers kind of shake out. Now look, the double-double, like I said, very juiced, but uh, Jared Allen should be engaged after not making the All-Star team. He should have a pretty good game. Darius Garland's back for the Cavaliers. I believe Allen should be able to get some easy points, easy rebounds for this Cavs team. If he wants to go out there and get a double-double double, double, double in the Cavs to lose, then so be it. But I like this odds at plus 114. It's a great bet, and I want it, and I'm going to be taking Jared Allen double-double and a win for that plus value. Now, if you wanted to give you a spread pick here, but I honestly don't like any of these ones, so we'll give you two other leans on player props solely because we don't have the line for him. The first one, D'Angelo Russell over in points plus assists. Now, there's a lot of injury concerns here because D'Angelo Russell himself is injured, questionable today. Patrick Beverly also questionable. Now, if you look at the over-under for this game, 241 points. That's just on FanDuel. I didn't check all the other books, but good golly, that is a high over under. One of the highest we've seen all season long. Both these two defenses haven't really been playing much defense as of late. And we know the Bulls defense stinks over the last 15 games. Bulls giving up the third most points per game in the NBA to point guards and the sixth most assists per game. It's even worse than the 30 game, last 30 games. Look, Russell's last game for Chicago, he had 27 points, four assists. That was a game he came off the bench. Ricky Rubio started. That was last April. We saw what LaMelo Ball just did to the Chicago Bulls, 38 points plus assists. The team's just terrible at defense. And I imagine we see maybe a line of like 27 and a half for D'Angelo Russell, something like that. I'd take that in a heartbeat. So we'll see. We'll update you down below. In his last 10 games with more than 25 minutes, because he's had a couple games where he just plays like 20, 24 minutes. The last 10 with 25 plus minutes, 39, 30, 26, 33, 36, 21, 35, 28, 32, and 39 points plus assists. Easily hitting 30 plus in what? Like eight, seven of 10 of those games. So I love D'Angelo Russell today. We'll see what his line comes out to be. If it's anything higher than like 28 and a half, probably gonna stay away, but we'll probably have a prop at least in that game because over under 241, and come on. Maybe we'll have some Zach Levine. He's playing against his former team. Now, the last one, Isaiah Stewart, over in points plus rebounds or PRAs. Now, I know, he heard us good last night and I know. It was frustrating, but we're back here for more because he is in the money glitch tonight against the center as a center versus the Hornets. Now, sure, you traded for Montrez Harrell. You know what? I don't care because Montrez Harrell doesn't play defense. He's another 6'8 power forward that the that the Hornets can play at center. That's not how it normally works. If you put a 6'8 power forward at center, you're going to give up points and rebounds to opposing centers. That's just how it works. And look, Isaiah Stewart, he's well rested after last night because he didn't play the whole first half, basically. So he should have a pretty good territory. He should have a great ch chance at hitting his over and points points plus rebounds, maybe PRAs. I take it probably in the 18 and a half, 20 and a half territory. So we'll see exactly what it comes out to be. If it's any higher, it's like 22 and a half, probably not taking it, but I think he's got a good chance. A lot of those sports books are just sleeping in. So officially we only have DeJounte Murray and Jared Allen exit in this video. But like I said, I really do like Isaiah Stewart. And I obviously do like D'Angelo Russell, assuming both of those guys play and they don't have crazy juice lines. Maybe the sports books are now updating their lines by a couple points before they post them. I'll let you guys know down below the pin comment section. Let's enter Friday, enter the weekend, making some money. I appreciate you guys for all tuning in. Check out the podcast on the screen. I'll see you guys in the next one. Sorry that we don't have a lot of plays in this video. Blame the sportsbooks for not releasing the lines early for us. We're trying to record this video at 7 a.m. early. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.